various stuff. Um, of how the various materials are organized within this book. Everybody understand what this paper is going to be about? You take the book of Joshua, you tell me how it's organized. So far so good. I've been doing this since day one, right? Oh, the book of Genesis. This is the way the book of Genesis is organized. First 11 chapters, blah, 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 talk about, blah, blah, blah. Chapters 12 to 50 have to do with the ancestors, blah, blah, blah. Abraham stories, blah, blah, blah. Isaac's story, blah, blah, blah. Jacob's stories, blah, blah, blah. blah. Joseph's stories, blah, blah, blah. Sound good? You do that with Joshua. So the paper itself should consist of blah, blah, five blah. paragraphs, <laughs> and that does not necessarily mean that there are five sections in Joshua, or three sections in Joshua, or whatever. But however many sections in Joshua, there's going to be five paragraphs with this essay. Uh, the organization and contents of the paragraphs are up to you, with the following restrictions, of course. Uh, paragraph one, blah, 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 we've done this whole thing before, I hope. Uh, final sentence of the first paragraph should be paper's main point, should list three separate topics or points that will be the main subjects of each of the following three paragraphs. Paragraphs two, three, and four, blah, blah, blah. First sentence of each paragraph introduces one of the topics. The rest of the paragraph provides a discussion of the topic. I didn't put this in here, and it needs to go in there, and the final sentence of each paragraph needs to sum up the paragraph as a whole. That's really important. Um, the first sentence of the last paragraph reiterates the three topics provide by way of uh, conclusion a general discussion of the organization of the book of Joshua. Don't go into much detail. Sound good? Cool. Yes? No? Sound good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it really isn't that tough. <laughs> so, cool. Uh, secondary resources, blah, blah, blah. We've done this if you did this for the second paper. This is what the third paper is going to look like if you didn't do the second paper. This is exactly what the second paper looks like. Um, this is an important uh, distinction, however, do not consult single volume commentaries on the book of Joshua. Now look at those. Commentaries are spawned. <laughs> it's a hell. Um, yeah, don't consult single volume commentaries on the book of Joshua. That is a single book that talks about the book of Joshua as a whole. Don't look at that. Dirty, naughty. Don't look at that. Uh, for this topic, they're generally not worth the time it would take to use them, because uh, I can tell you, if you consult them, if you consult five commentaries on the Book of Joshua, you're going to get five outlines of the Book of Joshua, which is the reason why I choose the Book of Joshua to do this paper with, because there's no objective answer. I think that there, I think there is an objective answer with Genesis. There's no objective answer with Joshua. You can organize Joshua in a dozen, 15 different ways. So good? I just want to know how you would organize it. And the reasons why you would organize it that way. Uh, biblical citation, style sheet, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going through this because we've read this again. Same song, second verse. Could be better, going to get worse. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Four pages long. Up to this point, we've been doing three pages. Giving a little leeway, four pages. We're working our way up. It doesn't have to be four pages, it can be three pages, it probably won't be two pages, because you can't really do a job in two pages. It could be three pages, but it can't be five pages. Sound good? Questions, concerns, comments, prayer requests, donations, about anything? Know what the paper's about? Cool, awesome. That's all the housekeeping stuff I think I have. Um, Absolutely, you have to write two. You have to write the first paper, which everybody did. You have to write one more paper. If you're happy with the grade, I think you will be. Okay. Um, <laughs> if I remember correctly, um, yeah, you don't have to write any more papers this semester. I'm oh, good. You don't have to. But yeah. 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 All right. Um, but yeah, you don't have to. Sound good? Um, so what we're covering today is the book of Leviticus. Sorry. <laughs> we have visitors. Uh, Leviticus. Oh, well. No, actually, the book of Leviticus, this lecture is probably one of my favorite of the entire year. Um, it really is. Um, the way we've worked up to this point in the lectures is that I basically say, well, let's see what we have, right? 
And we started chapter one, verse one, and we'll start reading. Right? And that's where we basically organize the lectures, and that is there is a point I just read. So far, so good. Right? This one, I'm actually going to lecture on it because I can tell you if we started reading chapter one, verse one. <laughs> Um, and we'd be miserable because we would be seeing um, not the trees instead of the forest. We'd be seeing the stems on the leaves of the trees instead of the forest. So what I'd like to do today is to give you a look at the forest of Leviticus. Because once you can see how the forest is organized, it is such a beautiful book. It really is. It's such a beautiful book. But once you see how the forest is organized, everything fits in it. Good? Cool. Um, I'm going to, before we do that, I want to talk about the end of Exodus really quickly. I want to provide some theoretical foundation stuff, I guess. And then I'll talk about the book of Leviticus. At the end of Exodus, starting in chapter 25 and going through chapter 31. Don't try this at home. I'm a professional. Uh, 25 through 31. Uh, we have uh, Moses is up on the mountain. He's just uh, God's just spoken the Ten Commandments. He's given Moses the covenant code. Moses has brought down the covenant code. Moses, God says, come back up. And so he goes back up the mountain. He goes into the thick darkness. And starting in 25 and going through 31, God gives Moses the plans for the tabernacle. It's absolutely, absolutely, absolutely remarkable. So we have that little golden calf episode. <laughs> uh, which goes from 32, 33, and 34. Starting in 35 and going through the end of the book in chapter 40, we have the building of the tabernacle. That's absolutely, absolutely splendid uh, about the way in which Exodus ends, except for that golden calf episode. But the splendid thing about the way in which Exodus ends is that the instructions of the tabernacle, and whenever Israel gets around to building the tabernacle, are absolutely identical. It's almost as if when they go about building the tabernacle, they do it word by word. The book of Exodus actually ends, not with the Golden Calf episode, the book of Exodus actually ends with Israel actually obeying God down to the letter, which is beautiful. Um, the tabernacle looks like this. Um, here's a courtyard. Twice as long as it is. Um, it's not the fancy schmancy paper. This is something different. Uh, it's a fancy schmancy courtyard that's twice as long as it is wide. Uh, in the middle of that, so this is like a wall, a curtain wall. Um, in the middle of that, uh, there's a building that is, again, three times as long as it is wide. And it's divided into thirds by another curtain. This is not the scheme. Um, um, it's divided into thirds by another curtain. So there's one third and two thirds. Um, in the center here, there's a bronze altar. A big um, 